Hi, and again, I'm going to go, in this video, I want to go over just the explanation of datum planes, especially the default datum planes of front, top, and right. So I'm going to open up Creo Elements. Again, I'm going to navigate to my working directory on my desktop that I like to utilize and I'm going to create a new part called um, I guess simple part would work. I'll say OK again I'm utilizing this default template and I'm going to click save right away so that I know my part or at least the first version of my part has been saved. Um, now looking over here on the model tree you have a front, a top, a right, and a coordinate system. These are all geometric elements that belong to this part. Um, I'm going to turn on my default coordinate system. I have it set by default to be turned off. Now, one thing's first, if I click the middle mouse button and rotate, the datum planes are going to rotate with me. If yours don't rotate, uh, you can change this by doing a setting over here under View, Display Settings, so under View, Display Settings, Model Display, there's one thing that you can check. It's datum planes to be displayed while reorienting. So well, you can click that and click either apply or OK and now your datum plane should be able to rotate. Now I'm going to go back and set my using my view manager to my standard orientation. And let's take a look at a couple things here. In a typical part of any part that you're going to be making, you can specify the front side of the part and the back side of the part the right side of the part, the left side of the part, and the top side of the part, and the bottom side. Or you can think of the right and the negative version of the right, which is left, and so on. Now, when you're looking at the datum planes that ProE has created for you, you're by default looking at the, f looking at the positive sides of these, or rather the front, the top, and the right. Now, if I was to rotate a little bit this way, I my right plane goes from black to this gray version which basically means that I'm no longer looking at the right side I'm looking at the left side now if I rotate around a little bit more my front side goes from black to gray so now I'm no longer looking at the front of the part but the back of the part and then I can rotate up so that I no longer look at the top of the part but I'm looking at the bottom of the part so in this view, I'm looking at the bottom, the back, and the left side of the part. And then I can rotate again to get the top side of the part, the front, and I got myself a little bit messed up there. There we go. So now I'm looking at the right, the front, and the top of the parts. So again, I might want to look at the, the front part, and you get yourself all messed up here sometimes. There you go. That's the view I'm looking for. So front, right, top. So now that's an explanation of where the planes are. Now let's take a look at what's going on here if I create a an actual sketch. So the sketch here, I have now the, deci the decision as to where I want to place my initial sketch from my part. So say I'm concerned or the base feature is going to be uh, the front of my part. So I'm going to click on the front now, hard to see, but there in, in, the, in my white background here, but there is a yellow arrow which points from the, front, from the front side of this plane to the back side of the plane. So that's the view of this plane that I'm looking at. So essentially, I'm standing in front of the datum planes looking at the front of the part. I could equally be standing back here and looking at the back side of the plane. So when I'm sketching on that plane, I have to decide which side of it that I'm standing on. Now, you might see the top plane has also been turned red, so that's specifying another direction. So I'm essentially, I rotate it here like this. I'm going to be sketching on the front plane, and now the question is, do I want to rotate it? Do I want to have the front plane viewed this way, or do I want the front plane viewed this way or this way. So it's going to depend upon another plane being specified as to where 
we are going to put it in space to make sure that what we're doing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to allow the top plane to be pointed towards the top. So if I have the front plane pointing towards me and the top plane pointed towards the top, that specifies the direction of how I'm going to be looking at essentially this plane or you could actually think of it as a piece of paper that you're about to sketch on. So if I say OK, that's essentially what happened. Now I have a grid specified to be turned on, but again let's take a quick look at what happened here. The planes rotated from here to here so that I'm sketching on the front plane and the top plane is pointing towards the top. I can utilize this icon to always reset my view to be looking directly at my sketch plane. And again, I like to put the grid on, but you might like to have it off. So I can turn it on and off. Now, once I'm set here, I could, of course, turn my planes off. And now I'm just sketching onto that plane, even though the plane icon isn't here. And you might notice what is we have our two, a vertical line and a horizontal line passing through the default coordinate system. So these are considered references because any sketch I'm going to make is going to have to be referenced to a particular location in the part file to lock my geometry down. So you can see my two references are mutually orthogonal, meaning that they're 90 degrees to each other and they pass through the origin, essentially giving me a uh, nominal x-axis and a y-axis and my zero zero zero. So again I can create a rectangle over here and I'm gonna put it over here somewhere. I could let it snap to this horizontal or rather vertical or horizontal or I could let it snap to the origin but why don't I put my rectangle out over here and you'll notice the H's and the V's give me are telling me that my that my um, let me do that again fast. I want to undo what I just did. Now, here I'm, cho I'm choosing the rectangle, left mouse click, drag, and before I left mouse click again, I want you to notice that there's two H's and two V's telling me that my two vertical sides are indeed vertical with respect to this vertical axis, and my two up and bottom, the top and bottom lines are indeed horizontal with respect to this horizontal reference line. Now I'm going to click left mouse button. Now, where'd all that information go? Well, you know, notice that I'm still in the rectangle tool. So what I need to do, to, if, I'm, if this is the only thing I want to put in my sketch, is to click on this one by one icon or your selector. And what's happened here now is we've created these or rather Pro E has created these icons. Now I have them showing up as blue just to make it them a bit more visible but normally they would look gray and they would be considered weak dimensions. Let me see if I can get it to tell me that it's a weak dimension here. So this says SD3 equals 178.97 and it's weak. Weak meaning that uh, the Pro E or Creo Des Intent Manager, which is built into the software, is telling you that to fully define this rectangle, you need at least these four dimensions. Now you can choose choose different dimensions and put them at different locations, but you need at least this many. So what I'm going to do is let me do a couple different things. This one over here, I'm just going to double click on it. Now one thing I want you to notice is look at the decimal places that are here. So uh, by default the ProE software is going to give you a bunch of decimal places essentially machine precision even though this would be no way near you could have a machinist make a part with this many decimal places of accuracy. Um, but that's why you have to come in and give it the actual real dimension. Let me say 125 and I'm going to click enter. Now a couple things happened there. When I hovered over it, the um, the hour the the dimension changed colors. Again, yours would be going from like kind of a dark gray to this cyan blue, or mine's going from this dark blue to the cyan blue. Now I click on it, it turns red, and if I and then meaning that it's pre-selected, or I could click somewhere in the window and it goes back to its 
uh, base color telling me that it's a weak dimension. Now I can double click on it again just as I did with the other one and I can change this one to 280. Now over here I can click on this one and I can do something slightly different. I can right click or uh, that's not working right. Let me see. Maybe just right click right away. No. Oh, here we go. It was there. I just was looking at it to look differently. So I can either choose to modify it or just what they call promote it or just make it strong. That's what I'm going to do. And it sort of rounded the decimal places itself down to two decimal places and said that's good enough. So that's another option. And over here, I can do this one, right click and choose the modify from the right mouse menu. And this brings up a modified dimensions window which allows me to essentially control the dimension and I have a degree of sensitivity here so I can make large changes or I can reduce the sensitivity and make very small changes if I'm just trying to nudge my part to get a feel for what's happening and again I don't have to see what's uh, we'll come back to this one in a little bit later but I could turn off the actual motion but with this one I'll accept a hundred and fifty point oh nine say that's what I want to do and I'll say that I'm done all right so now all my dimensions are black which says that I'm fully configured but there is one other thing that I can still do I can grab on any one of these pieces of the part and I can manually move them so I can change the width change the height or I can grab this one of the corners and change the entire location of the of the part I could even come down here now and bring me to different other sides of the origin so I can do all these things just still within my uh, sketch manager now once I'm done with my sketch I can click oh well, another thing before I do that you can come up here and if you're going to make a solid part you want to make sure that you have a closed loop to start off with so I can click over here to shade um, closed loops so again these are things that you can do uh, in the sketcher and I can rotate myself into three dimensions here and of course once I say that I'm done my dimensions go away my shaded part goes away. All I'm left with is a pre-selected outline of my sketch, which then I can utilize to make a part. So in this case, let me make a simple extrusion here, and we'll talk about this in another video, and I can just say done, and there's my part. Now again, I have it in hidden line view. I can show it in shaded view, though I prefer to keep it in hidden line view. And of course, I could turn my datum planes back on to show where it's located within the zero 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 okay that's all for now